When you're stuck in analysis paralysis, what's usually required is a mindset shift. In a perfect world, everyone would build the best solution the first time, every time. But that's not realistic because future you is always going to be better than you are today. And the fastest way to get better is to be willing to make mistakes. You have to put your ego aside and accept the fact that you don't know everything. Let's start working through a simple example. And while we're doing that, I'll share some tips and tricks and some thoughts from my own experience that can help you move forward when you feel like you're stuck and don't know which direction to go. I'm going to tell you a little secret. The code that I'm going to write today is not going to be perfect. I know that a year from now or a month from now, or maybe even next week, I will look back on code that I've written before and think, oh, I could have done this a different way. Or maybe doing it this way would have been smarter. Nobody wants to make the wrong choice. But if you live in fear of making the wrong choice, you're never going to get anything done. In our example today, we're going to build a simple enemy spawner. We'll have a really basic class enemy that has one public method, initialize, and we'll send in the spawn position. All we're going to do is set the transform position to that spawn position, and then we'll set our enemy to be active. Now, this is where the paralysis might start to kick in. You'll start thinking, well, should I use a factory or do I need object pooling? Should I make this data driven or something else? So here's tip number one. Choose the simplest solution that gets you coding immediately. We're going to prototype and validate fast. So a very simple approach we could take is to make an enemy factory. The enemy factory could have a reference to a prefab we want to create. We'll have a public method here that takes in the position we want to use. We'll just instantiate an enemy at that position. We can grab its enemy component and call its initialized method to set that position and then just return a reference to this new enemy. And there you go, you've created a simple solution for your problem. Now at this point, you should criticize your own solution. What do you like about it and what don't you like about it? What are the pros and cons of using this solution? Now sometimes you might have to actually put it into your game and try it out. But if we just look at this code, you can see it has one very big pro. There's a single entry point, which makes for a fairly attractive API. But I can see one big con to this already. How's the system going to handle spawning hundreds or even thousands of enemies? So while this solution is okay, we should prototype something else. In engineering or game programming, you might hear people call this dog fooding. That means the code that we're writing right now is just prototypes and it gets thrown away. It's not meant for production in any way. Building several small prototypes like this is going to get you out of your head and quickly validate any assumptions that you have. Remember that it's easier to optimize a working solution than a non-existent one. The results of our factory implementation can guide our decision making the next prototype. So the shortcoming there was it's not really able to handle hundreds or thousands of enemies. Let's implement an enemy pool. Now, just before we do this, I'm going to add one more class here. I want some new extension methods so that I can make the code inside of my pool a little bit more concise. Let's have a new static class. I'll just call it game object extensions. We'll have one extension method that will set a game object as active and then return itself, of course, so that we can chain everything together. Then let's make the inverse of that, of course, to set a game object as inactive. Now the pool will have some similarities to our factory prototype. We're going to need a reference, of course, to the enemy prefab. And let's have another class member where we're going to store a reference to the pool itself. Then let's have an awake method where we create a new object pool of type enemy. The constructor will take in a delegate for creating a new enemy, another one for when we take an enemy from the pool, and then another for when we return an enemy to the pool. And finally, we need one for when an enemy needs to be destroyed. Then let's set collection check, default capacity, and max size. Now we've got our pool. Let's have a public method so that we can get an enemy out of the pool. We can pass in a position. After we get an enemy out of the pool, let's call the enemy's initialize method again, just like we did with the factory, and return the enemy. Now for our pool, we need some extra functionality because we have to be able to release an enemy back into the pool. For that, let's just have another public method here. So now we have a second prototype. What are the pros and cons of doing it this way? Well, obviously we've solved one of the deficiencies of using just a simple factory, but we've added some complexity to the API in that now we have to call the release method every time we want to send an enemy back into the pool. That means that every enemy will have to reference the object pool somehow. The other thing that's not going to work for our game is that this enemy pool only handles one type of enemy. What if I want two or five? Let's prototype one other version. Tip number three is check your ego at the door. Nobody knows everything and nobody is right all the time. If you give yourself permission to make mistakes, you learn faster than those people who have to be right all the time. 
When you set aside the need for perfection or the desire to appear flawless, you give yourself permission to make quick decisions and you'll get better outcomes through action rather than hesitation. So let's build a third prototype. Now, I would like some variety in my enemies. How could I do that? Well, maybe we want to customize them right inside of Unity with a scriptable object. The object could have a reference to the prefab and maybe some other variables, maybe speed and maybe health. If we were going to make a data-driven spawner as a mono behavior, inside we could have a reference to many different configs. Let's just have a public array. Now we could call our spawner through a public method that would send in maybe an index for the array and a position where we want to spawn at. We just choose a config from the array, instantiate an enemy from the prefab that's set in the config, get a reference to the enemy component, that way we can call its initialize method and set that initial position. Additionally, we might want to set some public properties on the enemy, or this might lead you to start thinking, well, maybe we should actually use a flyweight pattern here. It might be more convenient for all of the enemies to keep a reference to their own enemy config. That would definitely be a pro to using this data-driven approach. So at this point, we've created three imperfect prototypes. The factory is great because it has a single entry point. The object pool is great because we can handle many different enemies. The data-driven approach is great because we can have a variety of enemies and potentially even use a flyweight pattern to take it further. Because we've explored all of these options, you're now in a good position to try to put together a solution that will work. It doesn't have to be limited to one particular pattern. It doesn't have to fit dogmatically into any textbook solution. It doesn't have to be something that people on Discord approve of. And it doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be something that's going to work for your game. You can build it and refactor it as many times as you want. So let's try to put this all together into something that's going to work. I'm going to keep the enemy config. I'm just going to move it into its own file. Because these three prototypes that I made, they're just dog food. They're going in the garbage. I'm going to delete all of them and we'll start from scratch. So based on our prototyping, we'll make some small changes to the enemy here. I'm going to change the signature of the initialize method so that we can overcome two problems. We'll take in a reference to the enemy config so that we can use a flyweight here. We'll also take in a reference to the object pool so that we can return ourselves to the pool when the enemy is done or destroyed. Let's create class members for the config and for the pool. And we might want to have some other private members for things like current health. So down in our initialize method, let's set the config from the constructor. We'll do the same for the pool. And we can set our initial current health to be whatever was set in the configuration. Since each enemy has a reference to the object pool that it came from, in our onDestroy method, we can just call the release method on the pool and send this one back in. Now, what I liked about the factory prototype was that there was one entry point. So what I'm going to do is define an interface. The interface is going to act as a seam between the rest of my game and the spawning logic. In the spirit of the factory programming pattern, let's have an entry point here that we'll call create. Create needs a config and a position, and it'll return us whatever it is that it's created. So a concrete version of this would be an enemy factory that implements that interface. I'm not going to make this a mono behavior, so let's keep a reference to the parent or the object that owns this factory. And let's also make a dictionary where we can index object pools by enemy configs. That way we can have a different pool for our variety of enemies and leverage both advantages of the last two prototypes we made. The constructor can take in a reference to the parent if there is one, and then we'll implement our interface method. Here, let's try to get a reference to our pool out of the dictionary. If there is one, we'll set the pool to be the existing pool. If there isn't one, we're going to create a new object pool, just like we did in our prototype. And then we'll cache it into the dictionary. So just like before, let's have methods for create, for take, for return, and for destroy. And then I'll just set those other values as well. Now we have a reference to the object pool we want to use. Let's get an enemy out of the pool call its initialize method so that we can set the config, position, and pool reference. Then we just return the enemy. And that's it for our factory. Let's come back up to the top of this file, and we're going to create our actual enemy spawner that leverages the factory. This one can be a mono behavior because we want to expose it to Unity so that we can set all of our configs. Very similar to our third prototype. Now, unlike the third prototype, we're going to have a reference to an I entity factory of type enemy enemy config. Now, we'll be able to inject this later, but for now, we can just set it in our awake method. The method we use to actually spawn enemies doesn't have to be complicated. We're just going to call the enemy factory's create method, and we can pass in any random config for now. 
So we can test this out, let's create an update method where we check to see if the keyboard space button was pressed. Every frame where we're pressing the space button, let's spawn an enemy. Now, if we think back to the start of this video when we started prototyping, it wasn't clear what kind of solution we would end up with. That's not to say that this solution is the best and it doesn't matter. We went from no solution at all to something that will work for most simple games. So why don't we try it out? To test this out, I have two prefab enemies here. They're both different bombs that come from Mesh Tint Studios. We should be able to create two config files, one for each type of enemy, and then our spawner should be able to generate different types as I'm pressing the spacebar. So let's create a new empty game object. I'm just going to call it spawner. I'll drag our enemy spawner component onto here. And then we need to make two scriptable object config records, one for the normal enemy. I'll just call it enemy one here. Then I'll just duplicate it and name the other one enemy two. For enemy one, I'll assign it the bomb prefab. And for enemy two, we'll drag in the poison bomb prefab. Once I have both of these scriptable object enemy configs all set up, I'll come back to my spawner in the hierarchy here, and we can drag both of those enemy configs right into the spawner. Now I'll just deactivate the two that I have in the scene, and let's press play. All right, I'll just start pounding the space button and see what happens here. We should get a nice variety. Now I haven't done too much with their basic sphere colliders. They're just going to push each other around a little bit and float off into the distance. So there's still some work to be done on the enemies themselves. And it might be nice to spawn them in an annulus or some kind of circle so they're not right on top of each other. But so far, working as intended. So try to remember, start with the simplest solution you can think of. It's easier to optimize an existing solution than one that doesn't exist at all. And don't forget that you're not perfect. Nobody is. There's always room for improvement. Your ego can get you into so much trouble. It can stop you from taking action. And on top of that, nobody likes collaborating with somebody who has to be right all the time. Don't be afraid to take chances. Identify what you're going for, prototype fast, and refactor as many times as you need. Accepting imperfection is key to becoming really, really good at programming. If you never make mistakes, you'll never know how to improve. And with that, we're gonna wrap it up for today. Don't forget to join us on Discord if you like. Hit that subscribe button if you wanna catch a new video every Sunday. Drop a comment below if you have any thoughts on analysis paralysis. Maybe I'll see you there.